One of the things Fire Emblem is best known for is the large cast of characters in each game that grow over time as you recruit units into your army. Sometimes these recruits aren't missable and join as part of the story, such as Alchrist and his retainers joining your army no matter what in Chapter 7 of Fire Emblem Engage. But other times units need to be convinced to join your army, starting as either neutrally aligned green units on the battlefield or enemy aligned red units. Or sometimes they might join your army after you visit a certain village. For most on-map recruitments throughout the series, all you have to do to recruit a character is talk to them with one of your units, triggering a little conversation that will end with them joining your side permanently. It's typically not too hard to figure out who needs to talk to a unit, the game will often hint at it in the cutscene before a battle, or include things like FE7's augury system or FE9's base conversations that will hint at who you need to bring to recruit a new candidate for your army. I really like this system, as I think it's a fun way to add a character to your army and can make their introduction more memorable. Part of how Dazla makes a good impression in FE8 is that he starts as a green unit and decimates the enemies near him, which makes you all the more excited to recruit him and control him yourself. Plus, a recruitment can add an interesting and compelling side objective to a map that players won't want to miss out on. A lot of the fun of FE7's Chapter 14, for example, is that there are two recruitable characters on opposite sides of the map, so you really need to get moving if you want to get both of them. Recruitable characters as a side objective are a great way to encourage players not to dally, because while a lot of players will be willing to skip a chest or a droppable item from time to time if it makes the map easier, people really like getting characters and they don't like missing them. So on-map recruitments can add a lot to the game. But I don't really want to talk about these typical recruitment methods that we see really often throughout the entire series, because Fire Emblem also has a lot of unusual and more difficult recruitments that I want to talk about today. I picked some of my favorite non-standard recruitments in the series, and I'm going to go through them from earliest to latest and explain what the recruitment is and whether I like it or not. The first one is in Fire Emblem Gaiden. In this game, a lot of units join your army in between battles by talking to them in towns or in a dungeon. This applies to a lot of units like Matilda, Silk, and Python. Some of them have a minor condition you have to meet. Python, for example, won't join your army unless you already recruited Clive. But the recruitment that I want to talk about isn't any of these, it's Delthea. Delthea starts out as a red unit and joins you after you complete her map as long as she survives. Units that join you on map completion isn't unheard of, though it's more common with green units. But what's interesting about Delthea to me is that keeping her alive feels like a bit of a puzzle, because she won't leave you alone. In fact, she'll even warp at you to attack you as soon as possible. So it can be tricky to finish her map without taking her out or having her take one of your units out. Fortunately, if you understand Gaiden and Shadow of Valencia's magic system, you can pretty easily come up with a solution. Casting spells in these games costs HP, and Delthea doesn't have any physical weapons, so you can just lower her HP enough that she can't cast spells, and then she's basically harmless as long as you keep enemy healers away from her. It's a neat recruitment requirement that completely changes how you play the map, and was revisited in FE6 with Douglas, who is also a red unit that won't hesitate to kill your dudes, but will join you so long as he survives the map. Fire Emblem 3 recruitments are mostly standard, but they did add one neat one in Book 2. In Chapter 17, we face Sheena and her protector Samson, who each care deeply for each other as well as the soldiers of Grah that they command. This makes up about half the enemies on the map. These soldiers won't attack you, and if you choose not to attack them in turn, you are rewarded by being able to recruit Sheena, who respects that you did not kill her men. If you killed any of these wimpy soldiers though, you'll have to kill Sheena too, and since Sheena is the one that recruits Samson, that means missing both of them. This recruitment is a massive flavor win. It honestly doesn't change your approach to the map that much since the wimpy units don't attack you anyway, but it's fitting for Sheena's character that she won't join your army if you kill her men, and it's also a fun little check on whether or not the player is paying attention and how bloodthirsty they're being. If you're killing dudes left, right, and center, you're going to miss the recruitment, and you'll even have to kill a character that you maybe used in the previous game, which is a real bummer. So if you don't want to suffer from the consequences of your actions, you have to pay attention, and you will be rewarded with a couple new units. Other games have had some moments similar to this one. One that immediately jumps to mind is the chapter Blood Runs Red in FE9, in which you are rewarded with bonus EXP if you don't kill the low-level vigilantes on the map. It's a bit tougher on this map though, because while the wimpy soldiers ignore you in FE3, the vigilantes do attack you on this map. So they're a lot more of a nuisance. 
The big difference between this map and FE3 though is that FE9 rewards you with bonus EXP, which I find a much less compelling side objective reward compared to a new character. When I play FE3, I never kill the weak soldiers because missing a character would be a bummer, but on the Path of Radiance map I pay no attention to those vigilantes, because losing a little bonus EXP just doesn't feel like that severe of a punishment to me versus losing a character. This does call into question why I value character recruitment so much, because I never actually use Sheena, but I would use the bonus EXP in Path of Radiance if I got it. So my only explanation for why I do this side objective in FE3 but not FE9 is that losing a character, particularly if you have to kill them, just hits different, even if you weren't planning on using them. For this reason, FE3 did this sort of situation where you need to not kill a bunch of enemy units best for me, because the reward of recruiting a character is cool, and it tells you a lot about Sheena's character that this is her recruitment requirement. Next up is FE4, and recruitments aren't too crazy in this game, but it does have a few interesting ones, two of which are mainly possible due to the game's mechanics, and one of which has been used a few times since. First, Ira and Hannibal's recruitments are fairly unique. For both of them, you need to seize a certain castle before you can recruit them. In Hannibal's case, the easiest way to do this is to put him to sleep, but in Ira's case, we don't have a way to do that yet. So instead, I usually send a unit ahead to bait Ira away from the castle long enough for me to seize it. These recruitments are pretty neat. I like how they establish the relationship between Ira and Hannibal and the people in the castle that they're protecting. It sets the tone for them as characters for the rest of the game in a pretty diegetic way that doesn't require a bunch of dialogue. This really only works as well as it does because of the way FE4 works, where there can be multiple castles per map and the map doesn't just end when you seize a castle. In most other Fire Emblem games, Ira would probably basically work like Delthea in Gaiden. She would be a red unit that joins at the end of the map if you don't kill her. Hannibal just wouldn't really work in most games without some major changes because the castle you need to seize to recruit him is past the one he's guarding. So in many games, it might be two chapters where you need to not kill him in the first one and then you recruit him after the second one, or they would change it to something completely different. The other recruitment that leans heavily on FE4's mechanics is Cullen. Cullen is a sword fighter that joins you in chapter two, but he doesn't appear on the map. Instead, if you send a unit to clear the arena during the chapter, Cullen will be the last enemy they face, and if they defeat him, he joins your army. I can only think of one other recruitment that's even sort of like this one, but it's different enough that I'm going to talk about that recruitment later when we get to the game it's in. I like the idea of recruiting a character from the arena. Even without having spoken a line of dialogue, the fact that you encounter Cullen in the arena tells you a bit about who he is. He's a money-seeking fighter, and he's seeking to do more with his life. It's a trope that makes regular appearances in the series. But part of why this recruitment works in this game is because of the way the arena works in FE4. In most games, arenas are pretty risky and often out of the way to get to, but in FE4, a character can't permanently die in the arena, and it's also an important source of money, so players are way more likely to engage with the FE4 arena than any other arena in the game except for maybe engages, which is in the Somniel. And you have a couple units that are likely to be able to clear the arena, so it's pretty unlikely that you would miss Cullen unless you're just skipping the arena entirely. This is unlike some other FE games where you could reasonably go through an entire playthrough without ever using the arena. Plus, some games just don't have an arena at all. I do think that this type of recruitment could work in other games, though, with proper hinting at it. Characters like Geats in FE7, or Noah in FE6, or Joshua in FE8 are all units that could maybe be fought in an arena. You would just have to sufficiently hint at their presence somewhere so that the players know to go fight in the arena that chapter. FE4's last particularly unusual recruitment, which we have seen used again on multiple occasions, is Beowulf, who wants to be paid for him to join your group. What's funny about this recruitment is that anyone can recruit him, and he takes the money directly from their inventory into his, something that only works because of FE4's system of each unit having their own money. This recruitment is fitting for a mercenary, and I like the questions that it asks the player. Are you willing to part with the money to recruit this guy, and if you are, whose wallet is Beowulf's 10,000 gold coming out of? It's also amusing that because anybody can recruit him, Beowulf's recruitment dialogue is just him talking to himself, the person recruiting him has no dialogue in the conversation. And this sort of recruitment has been used a few times throughout the series. In FE6, Q wants you to pay him, and he offers you three different rates. The less you pay him, the lower his stats are. This is one of my favorite implementations of this gimmick because it asks the player interesting questions. 
Are you going to use this guy enough to pay him for his highest gold rate, or should you haggle him down? In FE7, we have another similar recruitment. Farina wants 20,000 gold to join your army. Money's not so tight in FE7, so I pretty much always have enough to pay her. But if you're doing a ranked run, it can matter for your funds rank if you haven't been diligent enough in planning for it. FE8 has Renak, who wants to be paid to join your party, but you can also just have Lara Shell berate him into joining you for free. This is a funny one. I love how the different recruitment methods speaks to Renak's motivation and his relationship with Lara Shell. He might be a money-seeking rogue, but he still can't say no to Lara Shell. And who can blame him? She's very convincing. Lastly, for this type of recruitment, Radiant Dawn has Volk, who wants you to pony up 3,000 gold for his services. So while this type of recruitment started in FE4, it's pretty common. We've seen a lot of recruits that want you to pay up before they'll join your side. Next up is FE5, and while I was reviewing Thracia's recruitments for this video, I was expecting there to be more weird ones, but honestly, the recruitments in this game are mostly pretty tame, except for one. But it does have a lot of units that are recruited via the capture mechanic. There are a handful of enemies like Lithis who don't join you by talking to them on the map, but rather by capturing them and holding on to them until the map ends. And there are some things that I think are cool about capture recruitments. For one, they change the vibe of the recruitment quite a bit. It doesn't always make sense for a red unit to suddenly change sides and immediately start fighting for you when someone talks to them. Instead, capturing them and convincing them to join you after the battle can feel more appropriate. And if you have to capture an enemy to recruit them, that means you have to fight them, because you can only capture a unit if they're at 0 HP or relieved of all of their weapons. So these capture recruitments present more of an obstacle than recruitable enemies that you can just talk to, which opens up some interesting design space for recruitable bosses. Generally, Fire Emblem has avoided recruitable bosses, and I think the reason for this is that they want you to fight the difficult enemy instead of just talking to them and moving them off the throne before you seize it. But in Thracia, if you make a boss a capture recruitment, like Salem, he can still be an effective boss because we have to fight him to capture him, while still letting him be recruitable. So capture is a cool way to make enemies recruitable, while still allowing them to be challenging enemies on the map. There is one capture recruitment in FE5 that's a little mean, and that's Misha. Misha has to be captured to be recruited, but it's tricky because she's on a mount, and mounted units can't be captured. So in order to recruit her, you need to put her to sleep first so that she dismounts, and then you can capture her. So hopefully you saved a sleep staff or a sleep sword for her, otherwise you're out of luck. In addition to capture recruitments, FE5 also has what I believe is the most ridiculous recruitment requirement of all time in the form of Xavier. Xavier is a general in this big indoor map, and in front of him are eight generals with portraits but no names. In order to recruit Xavier, we need to turn all of these generals into green units, and to do that, we need to match them up with a specific one of the villagers that are locked up on the left side of the map. So basically, you need to let the green villagers out, escort them to these eight generals, and let them talk to the general that they're associated with, which will then turn that general green. While you're doing this, the enemies around are going to impede you, and the generals and Xavier will be happy to attack your units. And you need to make sure none of the generals die before you have a chance to turn them green. There are reliable ways to do this, particularly if you manage to snag a sleep sword off of an enemy earlier in the game, but it's still tricky and if you don't have the sleep edge, it's a nightmare, which makes this a particularly hard recruitment on blind playthroughs. And at the end of all of this, you get a pretty alright general. Xavier's stats are pretty solid, but you also won't miss him if you don't get him. This recruitment's definitely a little too esoteric for my taste, and I would have done it a bit differently. But despite my misgivings about it, I still think it has some value. It really sells you on how Xavier values the well-being of his men, and captures this in a way that NPC dialogue just can't. It's similar to the Sheena recruitment in FE3 in that way, but I like that recruitment a little better because the recruitment condition, while still telling us something about Sheena, does not make me want to pull my hair out. The nice thing about the design of older FE games like this, though, is that cast sizes were often really large, so missing a unit really wasn't that big of a deal. So when I play FE5, if I don't feel like bothering with Xavier's recruitment, which is most of the time, I just don't bother with it, and it doesn't really hurt you. FE6 has just one odd recruitment that I haven't already mentioned, and that's Kath. Kath is a thief who can show up in up to six maps, and on each of these maps, Roy can talk to her once, and once you've done this three times, she'll join you. This is a really fun recruitment, especially on your first playthrough. 
The first time I played this game, it was amusing to try to predict when Kath was going to show up again, and then adjusting my strategy mid-map to try to talk to her before she leaves or I finish the map. I also think it's neat that she can have a different join time depending on how early you can get your talk conversations in. She can join as early as chapter 12 or as late as chapter 22. Fortunately, she's a thief, so whether you recruit her early or late, she's still equally good at opening chests and doors. I can't think of many recruitments like this for the rest of the series. In the Awakening Spot Pass DLC, you can recruit Gangrel, which requires Krom to talk to him three times, but it's all on one map, as opposed to being spread across six maps like Kath. This is one of the most memorable recruitments in FE6 for me, it's part of why Kath is my favorite thief in that game. Next up is Fire Emblem 7, which has just one recruitment that I want to touch on. I mentioned earlier that there was just one recruitment in the series that reminds me of Cullens in FE4, and that's Carla in FE7. Carla is a very strange unit because for her to appear on her join map at all, you have to train Bartre to promoted level 5. Which isn't hard, but Bartre is not the best, so it can be mildly frustrating, and a lot of people probably won't run into this recruitment in a blind playthrough. If you do train Bartre, though, Carla will appear in Chapter 31X just a couple chapters before the end of the game. She appears as a green unit and immediately goes to hang out in the arena. If you talk to her with Bartre, he'll fight her, and if they both survive one round of combat with each other, she'll join your army. It's also worth noting you have to be in Hector mode for her to appear. When I first learned about this recruitment, it was when FE7 was the only Fire Emblem game I had played, and I did not understand it at all. Of course, once you play FE6, you realize it's a cute reference, and I do like it as a little Easter egg, but it's still funny that you have to train this mediocre axe bro, spend a promotion item on him, and then you're rewarded with a 14 strength swordmaster immediately before the end of the game. Even funnier is that the recruitment happens on Battle Preps, a map with no combat outside of this arena. I like the narrative aspect though, and it's a pretty fun recruitment to do the first time. And that's the most important thing, because if you decide you don't want to do this again, you really don't need to. It's a very skippable recruitment. You will not miss Carla. So if you think of this recruitment as more of an Easter egg than something you need to do every playthrough, I think it's fun. We're going to move right past Sacred Stones because it really doesn't have any crazy recruitments outside of kind of Renak that we already talked about. But Path of Radiance does have a weird one. Fire Emblem games often have hidden items on desert maps, but FE9 took this a step further and hid an entire recruitable character on their desert map. Stefan is a pre-promoted swordmaster with pretty great combat, but the only way to get to him is to take Mordecai or Leith and bring them all the way to the top right portion of the map, where there is a single tile they can step on to trigger Stefan's recruitment. If you step on the tile with anybody else, you instead get the vague Kadi. So this guy's really easy to miss. He's on an out of the way part of the map and you need to get there with one of two units that are impeded by desert terrain. So if you don't know that he's there, you probably won't think to head up there. Fortunately, many FE players are already conditioned to look up where desert items are whenever they get to a desert map. And if you do that, you will be informed that he's there. I actually don't mind that this guy's super missable though. He's a bit of a mysterious enigmatic character and it makes sense that he joins in a mysterious, easy to miss way. He's also good at combat, so it's cool if you get him, but he's really far from essential or even particularly important from a gameplay perspective, so if you do miss him, you probably won't even realize that you're missing anything until you read about him on the internet later. This is the kind of unit that you probably missed on your first playthrough, and then someone would tell you about him at school, and you didn't believe them because it was the same kid who told you you could unlock Sonic in Smash Melee. And then maybe you get him on your second playthrough. This aspect of the recruitment has kind of been lost now that I have constant internet access, but at the time it felt pretty cool when I recruited him in my second playthrough. I think the game could probably give you a little bit better of a hint that Stefan is there, but I really don't mind him being a mysterious, missable recruitment. Radiant Dawn is up next, and it doesn't really have any odd recruitment mechanisms on your first playthrough but there are two quirky ones I wanted to note on subsequent playthroughs. And these recruitments are spoilers, so if you haven't played Radiant Dawn yet, skip ahead a bit. On playthrough 2, Peleus and Laren become recruitable. Peleus' recruitment is pretty easy. All you have to do is elect not to kill him on any playthrough after the first, and then he joins your army. On the first playthrough, you will not be given a choice, so you can't recruit him. Laren is a bit more involved. First, you need to deploy the Black Knight in the finale of part 1. That's no big deal, you were probably going to do that anyway. Second, Ike needs to fight the Black Knight in Chapter 7 of Part 3, and the Black Knight needs to survive. Do that, and Laren will join you at the very end of the game. I actually really like the idea of these small what-if scenarios that you can get in a second playthrough. 
There are a lot of characters in Fire Emblem that I do not think should be recruitable the first time you play the game, as it seems integral to the plot that they aren't, but who I think could be playable in a just-for-fun New Game Plus context. Someone like FE8 Selina being recruitable after you've already completed Erika and Ephraim routes once would have been kind of neat. I think it's important that she doesn't join you in the main story, but in a New Game Plus it could be kind of neat. And it would have been pretty easy, she's already in the game as a creature campaign character after all. And I think there's a lot of characters like Selina that wouldn't mind the second playthrough recruitable character treatment. So it's cool that Radiant Dawn did this, I hope it's something they do again in the future. Next up is Shadow Dragon, and most of the recruitments in this game are pretty standard, except for one new type of recruitment requirement which is used frequently here, and that's Unit Death. FE11 Gaiden chapters only unlock if you have a small number of units, a requirement typically met by killing off some of the units you have or skipping some recruitments. The goal of this system seemed to basically be to allow you to replenish your ranks if you're having a hard time and a lot of your units are dying, because these Gaiden chapters have new units for you to recruit. I think this system is fine for that goal, but it introduces some friction because people's expectations for a Fire Emblem game have broadly changed since FE1 came out. In the earlier Fire Emblem games, death was assumed to be in play. Units would die, maybe you would miss a couple, but it wouldn't be a huge deal because there's a bajillion characters for you to recruit and use instead. But I think people are more opposed to units being killed off now than they used to be. But they still want to see all the content. So there's some friction here where people want to see the guidance, but they don't want to kill off their units to get them. I see what the game was going for here, but it is a shame that you can't get some of these units without playing in a way that I think most folks just don't want to play. The guidance requiring you to have a small number of units also doesn't play super nicely with the generic replacement system that this game has. If you kill off too many units, the game gives you a bunch of generic units to replace them with, so if you want to get all of the guidance, you can easily end up in this cycle of killing units to unlock the guidance, hitting the threshold to get generics, and then killing the generics to get more guidance if you want to play all the maps. So I think this system is actually pretty cool if you're Iron Manning, but it'll probably frustrate you if you aren't Iron Manning but still want to recruit all of the characters. There's one other funny recruitment in this game, which you only experience if you fail to acquire the Falchion and either don't recruit Tiki or allow her to die. In that case, Goto will point out that you don't have a way to kill Medius and send you to a Gaiden chapter where you can recruit Nagi, who with the proper strategy can be your Medius killer. Fire Emblem Awakening recruitments are up next and they're mostly pretty standard with the exception of Severa. She starts as a green unit and you need to protect her while she marches towards a villager. She's pretty at risk of death, but she is a green unit, so she's a legal target for the rescue staff, and you can use that to keep her out of danger while you clear a path for her to go talk to her buddy Holland. This is a cool chapter in concept. It plays out like an escort mission, and Severa charging forward with little regard for your efforts to hold her back are perfectly in character for her. I would love to see this type of recruitment explored again in a future map. Next up is Fire Emblem Fates, and most of the recruitments in this game are talk or story based, but there are a couple that I think are worth noting. First, there are a couple characters that join you for upgrading buildings in my castle. Izana joins you after you upgrade the hot springs to level 3, and Yukimura joins when you upgrade the puppet to level 3, and Flora joins after you upgrade the launcher ballista or fire orb to level 3. I don't have too many thoughts on this method of recruitment, beyond that it's funny that Izana joins you after you upgrade the hot springs. I think it's a decent incentive to engage with some of the buildings that you might not otherwise focus on. The last recruitment I want to talk about in Fates is Shura's recruitment in Conquest. After you complete the map where Shura is introduced, you have the choice of sparing him and letting him join your army, or killing him and taking his boots, which give you the literal boots stat booster. Beyond that it's funny that it is an option to kill this man for his boots, I think it is a pretty interesting choice. Shura has solid stats and is very helpful in some of the upcoming maps, but he's not uniquely good. I would recommend taking Shura if you don't feel like you have great combat units or if you're worried about ninjas in upcoming maps. But if you feel like your team is already cooking, I would just take the boots and make your current team that much stronger. I would definitely recommend recruiting Shura on your first playthrough though, because he's cool and it's difficult to be sure that your team is good enough if you haven't played the game before. Narratively, I think this recruitment is kind of whack, but mechanically, I think the choice is cool. Three Houses is up next, and it completely changes how recruitment works. In part one of Three Houses, you recruit units by increasing their support level with Byleth, as well as by increasing the skill and stat they are interested in. So if you want to recruit Bernadetta, for example, you need to do some combination of increasing your support rank with her, your bow skill, and your strength stat. 
In Act 2, you can re-recruit characters that you recruited in Act 1. Some join automatically, others have to be talked to or join at the end of their map. This system works well for what Three Houses is doing. It's a game about forging bonds with your students and helping them grow, and the system matches that perfectly, but it's pretty different than the other games in the series. And that's the last game we're going to discuss here, because Echoes didn't have any new crazy recruitments outside of the ones that were also in Gaiden. And engaged recruitments are mostly pretty standard. Looking back over the series, I really miss some of the zanier recruitment methods. Take someone like Xavier. No one would remember Xavier if he was just a general with some sense of duty that joins you at the end of his map. Instead, to everyone that has recruited him, he's a very memorable unit. He doesn't just tell you he's loyal to his men, he proves it by making you help all of his men out before you can recruit him for yourself. And maybe this particular recruitment is a little too convoluted, but I think it shows how recruitment methods can make a character more memorable. Sometimes it can make a map more memorable too. Whenever I play FE6, the Kath maps stick out to me because I remember that this goober of a thief is going to show up partway through them and force me to change my plans to go chat with her. So, I like the more unusual recruitment methods, I hope some of them return. This may mean that the occasional player misses a character every now and then because they don't want to do a recruitment requirement, but I think that's a worthwhile sacrifice for the fun characterization and unique and interesting objectives the recruitments can provide. And I think as long as these recruitments are properly telegraphed, players are able to make that choice for themselves whether they want to do the recruitment or skip it to make the map easier. And it's Fire Emblem. We always get way more units than we need in these games anyway, so the occasional missable unit isn't going to ruin anyone's run. But figuring out how to get a missable character can make a run more interesting. I definitely don't need Xavier or Stefan tier recruitments, but units that you have to pay, like Beowulf, or units that only join you if you haven't done something that would anger them, like Sheena, are pretty cool, and I would love to see recruitments like that return. So, those are my thoughts on some of Effie's more unusual recruitment methods, but what do you think? Would you like these sorts of mechanics to return, or should they stay gone? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments, and if you like the video and you want to see more like it, be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons so that you never miss an upload. As always, a big thank you to my geckos on Patreon, and a shout out to my skinks, Aaron Geddon, Cosplay Sylveon, Doopy, Emma, Aiki Pumi Cabre, Lonely Voxel, Lucy Sev, Morg Wolf, Red Mage Morgan, Stars to Art, The Noodle Doodler, Upscale Furry Trash, Van West, and Wingman.